that even farther and uh, do all we can to help those that have been displaced. I know that we're working, uh, we can work really closely with the uh, employment services on training, uh, on uh, stipends that they can give out to workers to get uh, training in new <laughs> positions. We just most recently at the City Council approved two different in, uh, local incentives for the two pharmaceutical groups that have located here, Amnil and the Integrated um, uh, Packaging. Uh, those are good ways to uh, use our local dollars, I think, and uh, it's a good incentive for others who might want to be coming here. We also need to continue to work uh, as much as we can with our other community partners, Brad, the county, and our, uh, the economic development uh, groups out of Frankfurt. We have to have a strong working relationship with them. And we have to keep a dialogue open that tells them we're the place to send the businesses. So uh, I think the council in, in the last uh, six months has had some successes, and I would like to see those successes continue. We have had several plant closures within our city, and you can't compete with Mexico. But uh, each time that we learn of any industry within our community, that was uh, closing or about to close or rumors of closing. Uh, we, I know SKF, Johnson Control, or Johnson Control, Control that it was pretty much a done deal and there was nothing that you could do with that. SKF, Dana, and some of those. Uh, we, uh, uh, through the ideal, we, myself, I know the judge, uh, Dana Iconi, we had made several visits to these uh, factories that uh, were. Uh, you know, it was the possibility that they might close down. So we brought down state officials. We we made every attempt possible to try to get these folks to stay here. But sometimes, folks, it's just uh, it's just hard to do because uh, they can go to another country, Mexico or I India. Now, I think a lot of the, the things that are going over there, but uh, cheap labor, and that's what has hurt not only the Commonwealth of Kentucky, but it's hurt our nation as well. So with that, you know, we, we do everything within our power when we know that if a facility is about to close or they are, you know, suggesting that they close, we will do everything, and we have done everything, I guarantee you, uh, to try to uh, get state incentives, uh, even uh, not only the state incentives, but we even offered some uh, local incentives uh, just to try to get them to stay here. Sometimes uh, we have one industry right now that uh, they're still holding on. And I think it's because uh, that we have tried, we've worked with them. I've been to several industries within this community, and we have done everything within our power uh, to, uh, to help them in any way that we can as a community. And we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Um, the next question will be yours, Mayor, to start yes. with, and it will be the same question for both of you. Do you have any plans to make up for the revenue that will necessarily be lost to the city through the loss of these jobs? If you say you're going to cut the budget, please be specific about the parts of the budget you will target. There may be some department heads here, and when we talk about cutting the budget, they don't like that word. When we did our budget for this new fiscal year, uh, of course, they uh, have a, uh, a time frame in which to conclude their budget to turn them in. Uh, we look over those budgets. And this year was probably one of the worst. I, I dread it this year. I dread every year with budget because it's, it's, it's difficult. But with that, we, we, you know, I had to cut because we had the loss of revenue. I had over a, a half a million dollars more added to our pension fund. Our health insurance goes up every year. But even with the cuts that we made, and I know that uh, so there are some city employees here. Sometimes they may not quite understand what we do, but 100% uh, of health insurance goes to a city employee. Six, we, the city pays 65%. Pays As I met with the uh, finance committee this year, and uh, all I would have to have said, let's cut it, and they would have agreed with it. But I said, no, we're not going to cut any benefits whatsoever. I was hoping that we could give a, uh, a raise. Uh, it's, this has been two years since the employees have had not a raise. That is not pleasing unto me. Uh, that, I think that's, you know, it's, it's, it's bad that we cannot give our city employees raises. But I know folks, you know, you know we, they have a job and, and we, we got a good uh, benefit package, and I was not about to cut anything from the employee. And as long as we can, can even with the loss of revenue, 
We have been able to stay in the black. Again, we are debt free. We will continue, uh, hopefully, to uh, perform in that manner as we do get more jobs within our community. And um, it, the outlook looks good, folks. It really does. So we're going to continue to uh, to keep afloat as, as 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 long as we can, and continue to provide the services that we provide for this community every day. I believe this question will apply equally to both of you. Um, I didn't get a chance to answer that. <laughs> I apologize. I thought you went first that time. Excuse oh, no. me. No, thank you. I think I'm right, right? I don't you are. His initial is by that. I bet you're um, just picking on me. Well, um, uh, when, it, when it comes to the budget, uh, if you look at our budget in the city, um, and, and as the mayor has pointed out, it's, it's significantly... Um, heavy on employees and employee benefits, but employees are the backbone of our city, our city government. So they are a central part of that. If uh, we, if our revenues do not continue to decline, then hopefully we will not have to make additional huge cuts. But uh, I do believe that our revenues are going to start recovering a bit, given some growth that we've had back here, some increases in employment. Um, as far as making specific changes to the budget, uh, I think there's always a place in any organization where you can take a look and say, is this really necessary? Is this really is the best way we can do it? You also have to question the way things are being done. There, on a daily basis, there's new technology, there's new processes that have come online or are available that might make uh, doing the process or doing the service a little less expensive by just switching out the technology, doing it online, doing it other ways. I think we have to, as departments, I know there are department heads here, we have to continually uh, as mayor, I would continually ask them to evaluate the services, make sure we're doing everything as efficiently as possible. Um, I think in good times, when you have revenues that are flowing in, it's easy to get what I call a little bit of fluff in the budget. I'm not saying the fluff's in our budget, but it's, it's important to always question if we're doing it as efficiently as possible. If I'm elected, I would do that and actually start at the top in the mayor's office and look to see what savings might be available. I'm not going to be taking a city car. I'm not going to be taking a city cell phone. That is a savings right there and hopefully we can find some other small things that would improve it. This next one is your question. Okay, first, great. And I apologize <laughs> again for that. <coughs> corporations establish direction for their various departments by developing mission statements with a list of long-term goals and short-term goals. This is a three-part question. <laughs> Does the city have such a mission statement policy in place regarding the numerous boards and commissions that are a part of Glasgow City Government? How is appointment to these boards and commissions determined? Do the members serve at the pleasure of the mayor or the council or by term? Do you plan to change the makeup of any of them? And how does a citizen know when they meet and the business that will be brought before them? Okay, um, that's a lot to cover. <laughs> yes. um, uh, as far as I know, most of the boards and commissions have mission statements. Uh, I know I serve on several, and we have those. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, as a council member, appointed by the mayor to serve on several committees and, and uh, that are council committees, and then also on exterior boards. We have a plaza advisory board, for example. I serve on the shelter board which oversees uh, animal control and that sort of thing. Those do have uh, mission statements associated with them. Many of our boards are made up of uh, uh, joint appointments either from the mayor's office or the county judge executives. They are on rotating basis. They come up sometimes staggered years. Um, there is a process to that. Each of those appointments are selected by the mayor's office, the mayor, and then they come before the council and we vote uh, currently as a council member, we vote to approve those appointments. Um, as far as I know, there's not a real centralized place to identify when and where those uh, groups meet. I would like to see that available on our website. I think uh, if you go to for example, uh, City of Bowling Green, their website, they have a wonderful page. You click on, you see every member of the board, every member of every commission, and you see their meeting schedule. I think we can do that, and uh, that would be a simple thing to include on our um, 
uh, website and I think those types of meetings need to be announced to a reg on a regular basis to the public either through the council meetings or advertised if possible uh, through the media. I think we need to actually do a better job of informing our public on when those groups meet. Thank you. There's probably anywhere from 25 to 30 different boards and committees that um, uh, at my pleasure that uh, are uh, appointed to such boards. Uh, as Mrs. Trapman has already stated, that that uh, you uh, uh, I appoint people, the the council approves most of those appointments. One of my ideals in theology, or not theology, but ideology is to uh, I'll give you some theology too in the morning. But anyway, the ideology <laughs> of of uh, getting younger people involved in our community, uh, and I try to do that because there are so many boards and committees out there. And when uh, the selection of someone, whether there's an opening or whatever on a board, somebody resigns or they just want to, the term is up, some are four-year terms, three-year terms, uh, some of them serve only maybe two or three terms, they want to get off the board or whatever. But anyway, the, uh, uh, but I try to get people, select people in our community that would fit that board. Uh, there's always an agenda. People who are on those boards, uh, of course, uh, some of those boards, committees, and this, all of them are, you can appoint uh, or they can give it to the media or whatever. Uh, the media uh, doesn't attend our meetings anymore. Uh, we have an ambulance board meeting. We've got 911 board meetings that are very, very vital to our community. Uh, we don't get the media attention like we used to. And I know the media has changed like everybody else has changed to some degree. But you try to select people in our community, and we have community involvement. We really do, because when you look at those 25 to 30 boards and committees that, that this city represents, and we've got great people because a lot of the boards are some of them more important probably than the others, but uh, whatever board that they're on, and there are agendas uh, a lot of times that are sent out, planning and zoning, some of those uh, are on the website. Thank you. Mayor, this next question is... is uh, directed specifically to you and Ms. Troutman there um, it's indirectly s submitted to you there will be different wording for yours oh, okay. <laughs> um, in an audit of the Kentucky League of Cities the state auditor's office issued a report that found quote staff driven organization with weak board oversight and inadequate policies governing ethical conduct compensation spending conflicts of interest and procurement some of the more egregious, and that's the end of the quote, some of the more egregious matters addressed by the audit were use of $64,000 of league money to purchase a vehicle for the executive director, $430,000 for out-of-state travel for the staff, and $50,000 to purchase tickets to sports events and horse races with no supporting documentation that there was any legitimate business purpose. You were on the board of the league during a portion of this time. What kind of oversight have you recommended to prevent the conflicts of interest, rampant unjustified spending, and conflicts that were presented in the report? And has this report affected the way in which you now oversee otherwise routine paperwork that comes through your office? I thank all members of the city <laughs> that are involved with the Kentucky League of Cities, and I served on the executive board. I served on the board of directors of the Kentucky League of Cities. And there has been a major, major turnaround for the Kentucky League of Cities, and I have been involved in some of those meetings. We have gone to Lexington, we've gone to Lisbon Town, we've gone to meeting after meeting after meeting. We've had conference call after conference call after conference call. Because a lot of things that was going on within the Kentucky League of Cities, uh, you know, uh, as members of, of the league, and we've been, Glasgow's been a member of the League of Cities uh, for a long, long time, and a lot of things that were going on, uh, you know, no one had uh, an idea of all these things that was going on. But I can guarantee the folks, uh, and, and you talk to any other mayor that's involved in Kentucky League 